Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. Last time we saw the basics of I2C communication and how data is transferred or received by the devices on the I2C bus. This time we will check the bus arbitration in I2C communication with SDL line. We will see the clock stretching on SCL line and finally we will check the advantages, disadvantages and applications of I2C communication protocol. So let's go for a ride. While playing cricket, a batsman won't able to identify and hit the ball if two or more bowlers are bowling at the same time. Just like that, if two or more masters are talking on a single bus at the same time, then the slaves will not be able to understand any of the information. So to avoid that, bus arbitration is used. This arbitration is achieved based on the slave addresses. It can be done by monitoring the SDL lines after sending data on the bus. If there are two devices who want to transmit the data to various slave addresses, for example, master1 wants to send data to slave1, which has slave address at 0x04, and master2 wants to send data to slave2, which has slave address at 0x06. Whichever slave has a low address will get the early access to talk over the bus. Well, how does it work? Check this diagram. Initially, the SDL line will be pulled to low for 4 consecutive clock cycles after the start bit. And after that, it will change the status to logic high, denoting 1 on the bus, because both of these masters are doing it simultaneously. Now, master1 is addressing to 0x04. So, we'll pull the SDL line to 0 on the next clock pulse. And at the same time, master2 is addressing to 0x06. And it will try to maintain the SDL line to logic high. Well, both masters are monitoring this SDL line. But as we have already seen in the last video, the SDL line is connected to the open drain configuration of the devices. Now, master2 sends one on the SDL line. But the SDL line is already pulled low by the internal transistor of the master1. So all of the current will flow to this transistor and the devices on the bus will read zero because the SDL line is pulled to the ground. Now master2 understands that even if I kept the SDL line high, it is showing low. That means some other device is accessing the bus at the same time. And that's how the slave who has low address gets higher priority. And master2 stops sending the data. And this is the bus arbitration in the I2C communication protocol. Let's see the concept of clock stretching. In cricket, while playing, the batsman takes his guard on the pitch to play the ball. If the batsman is not ready, he'll leave the pitch and tell the bowler to hold until he gets ready for the delivery. Just like that, master wants to transmit data, but the slave is not ready to receive it. So, there needs to be some mechanism to handle this condition. Let's take an example of EEPROM IC. When some data is written on the EEPROM IC by a master, it will save this data. And if the master issues a read command immediately after the write command, then the EEPROM IC can tell the master to wait while it is saving this data. 
to deal with such cases, the clock stretching technique is used in the I2C communication protocol, where SCL line is stretched by the slave device which indicates the master that the slave is busy. The status of the clock is monitored by the transmitter. An I2C slave has every right to hold down this SCL line if it needs to reduce the bus speed. The master on the other hand has to read the clock signal after releasing the SCL line to high state. And it should wait for the SCL line to go high again if it is pulled low by the slave for clock stretching, which will indicate the master that the slave is not ready for the communication. After the slave releases the SCL line, the data transmission resumes on I2C bus. And that's how the clock stretching helps the slave devices. Let's see some advantages of this I2C communication protocol. I2C communication needs only two wires where we can connect multiple devices. More than one masters can access I2C bus where they can read and write from the slave devices which are connected. The acknowledgement and NAC functionality can be proved very useful for error handling. This error can be detected by the receiver by using error detection mechanism. Generally, this error will be a bit flips from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. I2C communication protocol adapts the requirements of various slave devices. For example, if a slave is little slower than other slaves connected on the bus, then it may stretch the clock line or the master will configure the compatible bus speed for the particular slave. Now we'll see the disadvantages of I2C protocol. 7-bit addressing gives less flexibility to slave devices because the slave address is fixed for the particular device which is given by the manufacturer. So there are high chances of selecting the slaves who have the same slave addresses which will make it difficult for users who want to select these slaves for some applications. For example, I want to use two accelerometers of same manufacturer for motion sensing. But this slave addressing doesn't allow me to use the same device again. However, modern slave has different addresses and they give leverage for choosing. In I2C communication, complexity of the firmware increases very much. Because the master device has to support features like bus arbitration and clock stretching. For 8 bits of data, we need to send one start bit, one stop bit, acknowledgement bits, read write bit, and 7 bit slave address. This increases data overhead for 8 bits, which reduces the data throughput. But in UART or SPI communication, we don't see such addresses or ACK NAC pet, which increases the data throughput. Since outputs are open drain, they need pull up registers which add limitations like limiting clock speeds and power dissipation. Every bus topology has one disadvantage which applies for I2C as well. If a slave device is hung or faulty, it can hold any of the lines or both lines low. This will not allow other slaves to transmit data on I2C bus successfully and the bus synchronization may get disturbed. So those were the advantages and disadvantages of I2C. Let's take an example of I2C where a microcontroller is collecting and writing data to slave devices. Let's consider a system where we might need a high resolution 16-bit ADC with more than 8 channels where sensors are connected. We might need an EEPROM IC to save the data collected by the master. An RTC chip 
which helps to save the data with timestamps. So this whole system can talk to each other using just one I2C bus. So that's all about the I2C communication protocol. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still, if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And finally, thanks for watching.